Hello Bulldogs. Let's talk a little bit about organelles. So organelles, pretty much we're going to be talking about animal cells and then we're going to tie in a bit about plant cells. The first organelle I'd like to discuss is the nucleus. The nucleus contains the chromosomes and the chromatin. The nucleus is the control center of the cell, so it is going to direct all the other activities, the life processes that are carried out by the cell themselves. Cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is the jelly-like substance that surrounds the other organelles, and it has a couple of functions. One is protection. Cytoplasm is, okay, it's kind of like snot or mucus. So it has a thickness to it, which allows it to absorb energy. So if you had a cell that was air-filled, and if it was suddenly hit, like from the side, that cell would shatter. It would not survive. Being filled with cytoplasm, if there is an impact, then it causes that cytoplasm to absorb that energy and to vibrate, thus protecting the other organelles and the cell survives. Cytoplasm also moves around the cell, it kind of oozes around the cells, and that is called cytoplasmic streaming. That allows for transport of different materials throughout the cell. The endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum comes in two flavors, smooth and rough. Rough endoplasmic, well first, endoplasmic reticulum is like the highway through the cell. It is typically going to lead from the nuclear membrane to the cell membrane throughout the cell. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes on it. And ribosomes are going to manufacture the proteins that are needed by the cell and by other cells if those proteins are going to be exported. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum is good at absorbing toxins. And so an organ like the liver is going to have a lot of smooth endoplasmic reticulums within their cells. The Golgi apparatus, and the reason that is always capitalized is that Golgi, there was a Dr. Golgi that, that he determined what this particular organelle was and what its function was. The Golgi apparatus is going to take those proteins that are produced by the ribosome, move through the endoplasmic reticulum, and it is going to package those proteins to be sent to other parts of that particular cell or to be exported through the cell membrane to be sent to other cells. The mitochondria. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. This is where cellular respiration is going to take place. You'll notice that the mitochondria looks like a kidney bean, and then it has infolds throughout it. The actual place of cellular respiration for a cell is in the membrane of the mitochondria itself. So if you just had that kidney shape, there's a lot of unused surface area within the middle of that mitochondria. So if that membrane of the mitochondria is enfolded upon itself, then it greatly increases the surface area available for cellular respiration. You will also find that particular cells, categories of cells like muscle cells, will have more mitochondria than other cells, like let's for example say skin cells, because those muscles are going to need more energy in the form of ATP to be used for the actions of the muscles themselves. The cell membrane. The cell membrane is semi-permeable. That means it allows some things into and some things out of the cell. So that leads us to ponder, what do we want inside the cell? So what do we want from the environment around the cell being brought into the cell itself? Well, in some circumstances, we need water. We need food coming in. We need carbohydrates coming in, etc. That will have a positive effect and a positive support system that is provided for the cell itself. Now, what are some things we don't want coming in to the cell? 
The first one that comes to mind is COVID-19. Obviously, we do not want viral particles coming into the cell, and cell membrane can detect some of those viral particles, and that's part of your immune system, and does not allow those particles into the cell or allow those viral particles to attach themselves to the cell membrane. Vitamin C actually makes the cell membrane tougher. It makes it more resilient to viruses being able to land on the cell membrane and then basically drill into the cell and release those viral particles, which then guide the cell to make more viral particles until lysis occurs, which means it's so full of viral particles that that cell explodes and then it spreads those viral particles to the other surrounding cells. What are some things that we want taken out of the cell? All right, um, when you breathe, you're breathing in oxygen, you're breathing out carbon dioxide. Everything your body does goes down to the cellular level. That carbon dioxide is coming from your cells. So as the carbon dioxide builds within your cells, as, um, as a result or being produced from cellular respiration, then that carbon dioxide is released into the bloodstream, which then travels to the heart and lungs to be expelled from the body itself. Vacuoles. Vacuoles are going to hold food, water, or waste. Vacuoles are kind of like little Ziploc bags that are tucked into the cell itself. Now, if it is a plant cell, then the plant cell is going to have one large central vacuole that's going to be full of water. If that plant is not watered on a regular basis and that water goes down within that central vacuole, then that central vacuole is going to lose its turker pressure and the plant is going to wilt. Now, if you notice the plant is wilting and you get it watered, then that turker pressure is going to rebuild within that central vacuole and there you go, the plant is just fine. If at the wilting point you do not notice and don't get the plant watered, then the plant is going to further wilt and then dry out and it is not going to be able to recover once you water that particular plant. One of my favorite organelles and the last organelle that we're going to discuss are the lysosomes. Lysosomes are going to break down defective parts of the cell. The lysosome is kind of like a little it's like a little self-destruct button within the cell itself. If it can repair the cells by just digesting or breaking down defective parts, that's what it's going to do. But however, if the cell itself is malfunctioning, like let's say the timer for mitosis, so that timer that's telling the cell when to divide and make a new cell, if that timer is broken, if that little clock is broken and the cell is dividing, 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 then the lysosomes hopefully kick in and they destroy those cells. By the way, those cells are called cancer cells. So lysosomes, lysosomes are interesting and they're being studied in depth because if we can learn how to activate the cell to make additional lysosomes or to kick all the lysosomes into gear in a particular area to wipe out a cancerous tumor then we have a cure for cancer all right well it is a friday and i hope you have a wonderful weekend and enjoy working on your cell project thanks for listening